Hi, I'm Marian Sasaki. Welcome to Life in the Law. Uh, you're watching Think Tech Hawaii. It's Wednesday, 1 to 1.30. And today we welcome somebody I, I, I've just been dying to talk to for months. So welcome Sean Hamamoto, the Executive Secretary of the Neighborhood Commission. Welcome to our little show. And I want to know everything. I'm so interested at the things that people can do on the community level. So I'd like to know exactly what you do, how did you come to do it, and what we can do to get involved. So just tell me about yourself and then how you got to be executive secretary. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you very much, Marianne, for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I guess just the background on myself and this position, I was appointed by Mayor Caldwell about a year ago. Oh, wow. Uh, so this is an appointed position confirmed by the city council. I've uh, been having a wonderful time. Uh, basically what my role is, is I um, oversee the office, which in turn oversees the neighborhood board system around mm -hmm. our island. Mm -hmm. uh, we help with day-to-day -day operations, um, help people with questions, inquiries, uh, basically to help people get more involved uh, in their communities via the neighborhood board system. Can you get things done at the neighborhood board level? Like Absolutely. what kinds of things can you get done? Like if I have a stoplight, I have, no, I have a, we, I need a stoplight on, I'm serious, I need a stoplight on my corner of McCulley and Dade Street, mm -hmm. really desperately. Does the, is that where I would go? That is a perfect place to go. Um, the neighborhood board basically addresses any concerns in the community, whether it be uh, state or city or even federal. And as to um, can things get done, absolutely, yes. Um, on the one hand, the neighborhood boards are um, what they say purely advisory, so they don't have any um, power per se. Like in terms governmental. Of, yeah, right. Exactly, like our elected official. Right. But although they are advisory in nature, I can say that um, government agencies such as the city rely very heavily on what um, advice the neighborhood board. Well, they must be a it. conduit to the community, right? You can have the ear, you know, yes. you have the ear of the community and you have the ear of the government. What's what's better? Exactly. Like what's more important? And and just just a few examples um I can say um so for example, parks. We all have parks in our communities around um our island. Now, um oftentimes in certain communities, uh we have issues of um crime, vandalism, uh which is very unfortunate. Now, one way to address these problems is to close parks at night during certain times. Right. Um, the Department of Parks and, Recre Parks and Recreation rely very heavily on what the neighborhood board, they basically leave it up to the neighborhood board to de decide. Really? Yes. That's fascinating. So well, we sure, they see. They're the eyes they can watch the when times are good. Right, exactly. So there was a recent issue in the um, Chinatown community with the Smith Baratania Park, mm -hmm. and the residents in the area thought, um, although they supported park closure hours, they wanted to... Um, adjust them so the community could enjoy the park more. Sure. So they went through the process and currently as we speak, you know, um, parks with HPD and the neighborhood boards, they are working on adjusting the hours. Oh, that's great to know because that's so, a funky little spot over there. Yes. I mean, I go there all the time and sometimes at night I'm like, yeah. So, um, yeah, so um, by all means, yes, the neighborhood board can have a positive impact on the community. That's great. So how, um, if you wanted to participate on a neighborhood board, what would you do? You mean being a board member? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you asked that. Um, so it just so happens uh, next year, 2017, is our next round of elections. Oh, okay. Um, so basically it's uh, very liberal, very open, we're very inclusive. Um, basically you just need to be a resident of the area mm -hmm. and over 18 years of age. Oh, wow. But is there a process like, well, first of all, is it the same as electoral districts or are they different kinds of are the yes. neighborhoods different? The neighborhood boards have their own districts. Okay. Um, and so, of course, they overlap with uh, council, state senatorial, state representative right. districts to varying extents. So where can people find out what their neighborhood is? Can they go online somewhere? Yes, uh, we have our website, um, oh, or terrific. they can just call us. Our website is uh, www.honolulu.gov uh, slash NCO. Or okay. feel free to call us, uh, 768-3710, and we'll be happy to let people know exactly what neighborhood board area That's they're in. That's terrific. Why don't you just say that number once more? So sure, everybody, happy you give to. Sean a call, you got a little problem in your name, give him a buzz. Okay, 
3710, and we'd be very happy to hear from He'll people. direct you to whomever you need to speak to. So, yes. and so, so I guess, so there's an, so, I mean, I would, it would be great to participate, but how is participation? Do people, is it full participation? It's, well, it's an elect, so these people are elected, so there is an election. Mm -hmm. um, it runs basically for about between April to May. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> within the past couple of years, we've moved to um, like an online type of voting. Terrific. Um, to save paper. But, you know, keeping in mind that there are people out there, maybe some senior citizens who don't necessarily have access to computers, so we do make accommodations whereby they can call in or come into our office to vote. That's so we, great. We did you ever serve people. on a, a neighborhood? Is that how yes, you... Yes, I did. Th that's how... So, so tell me, you had... Why did you get involved and how, like what caused you to get involved and then how... Or did you always want to be involved? Um, just out of concern with the community. I was a member of the downtown Chinatown neighborhood mm -hmm, board. Mm -hmm. I love um, it there. It, it's a wonderful place. Um, and what's really wonderful about it is there's so many fantastic people, volunteers, um, business owners, residents who volunteer that time. Um, as you're aware, Chinatown has its share of issues. Oh, yeah, but, you um, know, I'm from New York. It's nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, what's not highlighted so much in the mainstream media is the po the really positive oh, aspect. Oh, I think it's terrific. It's growing. There's great restaurants there. Fantastic the nightlife is great. I mean, I go there probably every week. Oh, I great. go there at least once or twice a week to eat. Sure. It's terrific, you know. Oh, businesses are flourishing. Little businesses are flourishing. I love to see that. It's a fantastic place uh, with fantastic people, and that's what really uh, encouraging me to join, to just help, to be mm -hmm. a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think one thing I'm proud of that I accomplished in the short time I was on the board was uh, I was one of the main proponents for getting that board televised. Oh, wow. Um, I guess in, in previous previous years, um, for some reason, that board was not in favor of having their um, board meetings televised. But I thought that, you know, we're here to serve the public. And, I think it's a terrific idea. And Openness thankfully, yeah, the, the yeah. board... Um, bought in to uh, my suggestion, and um, so to this day, they're still being televised. So where are they televised? Um, well, the meetings were at the pa Pawahi Community Center, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, so now uh, we contract with a um, videographer, and they come in and they um, record it. It's not live, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but it, at least it's recorded, and um, they put it with the Olelo in their archives. So oh, people nice. can have access to it online. Oh, great. That's great. Yeah, because... I I think people are fascinated by the way government works, and I know that I, when I'm watching whatever uh, C-SPAN or whatever is, you know, in Congress or even a courtroom, courtroom cameras, it just, it's riveting because, you know, you're really seeing, like, how things get done and how people interact. And you, so lots of times you think, hey, I can do that. I can speak up like that. Maybe I'll go down and, you know, participate. So it's really... Actually, it brings up um, just earlier this week, I had a woman just come into um, our office. She was concerned about the uh, recent, I guess, the murder they had in Chinatown. Mm -hmm. And I guess, you know, she's a resident in the air, a new resident to the air, and she was very concerned. So she came into our office asking, you know, what, what can I do? So I, I, first of all, thanked her for coming in. And I did um, point out that next week, Wednesday is the next downtown Chinatown neighborhood board meeting mm -hmm. where you have uh, representatives from HPD, your um, city council members, state representatives, that's all terrific. in one room. And I said, that's the perfect venue for you to voice your concerns. Right, right. So she was very thankful. She says, I'm going to attend. And I again thanked her for being concerned and willing to be proactive. Right. We're very lucky here, I think, because the elected officials are, are very accessible. Yes. They come to meetings. They come, I mean, I, I'm, I've met senators, I've met uh, state senators and had them on the show and representatives and, and they're, they're all just right there, right, readily contactable and they really want to contribute, you know, they really want to do their public service. So it's great if you can get everybody in, in a room together and, and have a, an audience like that, that's terrific. It, it is and, and I really do uh, commend our state representatives and senators, council members. I know a great many of them really see the value in attending these, and many of them um, attend in person. If they can't, they send a representative. But by and large, they've been very attentive right. um, to these neighborhood right. boards. And so then the Neighborhood Commission 
oversees all the individual boards. Yes, is that correct. right? And so, so what does that oversight look like? What do you mm -hmm. set the agenda, or what? I mean, well, actually, the chairs of each respective board set their agendas. We help process it. Um, on our staff, we have what we call neighborhood assistants. So these are people who actually go to the board meetings all over the island. We have 33 boards wow. around the island. Lots of opportunities and for every, us to get involved. Every, um, uh, nook and cranny we have a neighborhood board and what our neighborhood assistants do is they help the board chair to run the meetings um, you know there are quite a bit of rules we have um, what we call our three governing documents uh, one is the neighborhood plan basically sets the overall policy mm -hmm. uh, rules we also in terms of parliamentary procedure we adhere to Robert's rules of order right and as well as the sunshine the state sunshine law to make sure things are done in a transparent right. way. So our staff is very well trained in these um, different documents. So they're there to help advise the chair and the board on how to conduct the meeting properly so that it is transparent, it is run orderly, and so oh, forth. That's true. So where do they get their training? Uh, In-house training. Um, really? I, since I've gotten in, I've uh, instituted a quite uh, regimented training schedule whereby our staff has training at least once a week on different aspects. Really? Um, Recently, I really wanted to um, step up our level of service we have to the boards. So I had my staff enroll in some parliamentary um, training. Oh, that's great. And I'd I'm, love to take that. And I'm very happy to report, um, as of a couple of months of, ago, our neighborhood assistants were admitted to the National Association of Parliamentarians. Wow. So, that's, a, that's a big uh, honor. That's a big deal. So we really, uh, you know, my goal is to really provide a high level of service right. to these right. boards. And rightfully so, because these people, they're volunteers. They don't get paid. Right. Uh, it just comes from the heart. Right. So I think it's our job to support them the best we can. Right. And, you know, anybody that's been involved in meetings knows how important Robert's Rules of Order are. Yes. Otherwise, you just... It, it just disintegrates, it's, it's and it, yeah, yes, right, yes. and it's a waste of time. You know, you maybe you've, you, you've left the kids with a babysitter, you, you know, you or you you're not watching your favorite show or whatever. You're going to a meeting and you're going to participate, and if it's not an orderly meeting, mm -hmm. it's it's a mess. You're right, exactly. it's chaotic. So the fact that you care so much about that level of detail as an attorney, I really appreciate that because Thank I you. love rules and order, <laughs> right? So you know that you can bring that to the community at that level is a huge contribution, I think. Yes, yeah. so that's one of our main functions, but also, yeah, just on a day-to-day -day answering phone calls um, from people, advising them. But that's what we're, we're basically here to help support the boards. Uh, we also, um, I also, since taking on this position, have put a greater emphasis on public outreach. Okay. Because this board system has been around since the early 70s, over 40 years, and most, I'll be very honest to say, most people don't know they exist. Well, let's talk about informing yeah. people of how they exist and why they exist after we take a little break. Sounds good. It's, I'm Marian Sasaki, Life in the Law. Come back in a minute. Hello, this is Martin Despang. I want to get you get excited about my new show, which is Humane Architecture for Hawaii and Beyond. We're going to broadcast on Tuesdays. 5 p.m. here on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, I'm Richard Emery. I'm with co-host Jane Sugimura of Condo Insider, Hawaii's weekly show about association living. The uh, purpose of these videos is to educate board members and condo residents about issues uh, relating uh, to association living. Uh, we hope they're helpful and uh, that they uh, assist in resolving uh, problems that uh, affect the relationship uh, between boards and their residents. Each week, Thursday at 3 p.m., we bring you exciting guests, industry experts, who for free will share their advice about how to make your association a better place to live and answer a lot of very interesting questions. Aloha. We hope you'll tune in. <music> Hi, uh, you're watching Life in the Law. We're delighted to have Sean Hamamoto. Did I say that right, Sean? Perfect. Okay, perfectly. <laughs> um, the Executive Secretary of the Neighborhood Commission with us. And he, just before the break, Sean was telling us how it's existed for 40 years, but nobody knew it was there. So how are we, how we introducing people to this tremendous resource they have? It's, you know. So um, 
Yeah, thank you, Marianne. You know, I think I, ideally, you know, if this was a perfect world, I would have a huge media budget where I could do primetime commercials to advertise. You know, unfortunately, that's not the case. We were on a very um, slim budget. So my idea was, well, we're going to do what we can to get out there into the community. So uh, on a few different aspects. Um, one is we, um, at certain, say, community events, like, say, uh, Filipino Fiesta, we'll have a booth an information booth, people can come by, we can let them know what neighborhood board they're in, we can give them information. Oh, so that's we do that kind of public outreach. Actually, um, if I can do a quick plug, in a couple of weeks here in Chinatown at the Cultural Plaza, October 22nd, there's a community Halloween event. Um, our office will have a booth there too. Oh, that's terrific. I'll definitely go. Please Count do. me in. October Please 22nd do. in Chinatown yes. for a Halloween event. Terrific. Yes. Oh, that sounds great because I'd love to see how, you know, you inter interact with the community and mm -hmm. just see, I'd love a, I'd love a, a, a calendar of all the things you're doing. I okay, totally great. keep my audience appraised of where you're going to be and how, what you. you're yeah, going to do. Thank you. have my stuff for that to oh, you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because this um, is what we want to encourage. I mean, we're about community, you know, we're about like Ohana and the community. And so the more we can do to facilitate um, the, the voices of the community, that's what we're, 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 you and I have the same goal. We want to hear the voices of the community. Exactly. We want people to be heard, and typically people who aren't, don't have the platform to be heard. Sure, so, that's exactly you know, what we're about. Right, right. Um, and in addition to doing these information booths, we also actively go out. We've just done a run of... Um, going to various Rotary Clubs around the island, oh, doing presentations at the Rotary Club meetings. Oh, great. Uh, we've done presentations for UH student groups, high schools. Uh, we have a wonderful PowerPoint where we really ex uh, explain the structure and process of how the neighborhood board system works. Right. Um, another new initiative I had when I came on board is what I call community outreach. This is where we go into the community, uh, primarily to businesses, but it could be uh, churches, community centers, medical offices. We just go out there in the community. We just stop by, knock on the door, introduce ourselves, and we just basically say hi. We're from the neighborhood com board, uh, neighborhood commission office. Have you ever heard of the na neighborhood boards? Right. And we just start a, you know, a really brief couple minute conversation with them just to bring awareness. And what we do is we've created um, posters to promote our neighborhood boards for each neighborhood board district. It's a picture of the actual board. Excellent. Oh, great. And we go out. So you might see them around town. There's these green posters that are about yay big. Right. And we ask you know, these different establishments, if they'd be willing to support their community by putting these posters up. Also, we have flyers that some businesses will give out to their customers. So oh, it's terrific. a very grassroots, uh, low budget effort. Right. It's a lot of um, sweat. <laughs> well, well, you know, uh, but, that's you know, how to reach the... That's what we you do. Know, uh, <laughs> Last night I was watching David Pluff, who is the public relations genius behind Obama's campaign. And he, we, they were talking about the problems of getting uh, millennials to vote. And he said, you know what? This is how you get millennials to vote. You get more volunteers, and you get more volunteers out there, and you have one-to-one -one interactions. Mm -hmm. Because that's how people communicate with each other. That's how you, you draw people in. They're not going to be they're not going to be drawn in by a TV ad or some, you know. They'll know that's just a TV ad. But if if you have volunteers in the streets who are actually, you know, advocating for your candidate, that's the most powerful thing you can do, and that's exactly what you're doing. You're you're going out there, and yes, you know. and um, and I can proudly say. So I started this initiative initiative um, this past January. To date, we have visited over 800 establishments island wide. Wow. Wow. So we, we've put in a lot of And people effort. are, I'm sure, very hospitable when you... Yes, when um, honestly, it's a mixed bag. You know, you have some people who could maybe care less, but you do have people who are supportive. Um, I, I want to relate a story. We were doing uh, outreach in Kaneohe, and uh, we're on our lunch break, and we're having lunch at a local restaurant. And as we were there, we got into a conversation with the owner about what we're doing, why we're here. He was so thrilled. He got our brochures and he put it on every table in his That's restaurant. Terrific. Let us put two posters up in his restaurant. And he right. just, 
Um, and it, it gave us a really warm feeling, and he was very supportive. Well, in a place like Hawaii, that's how we do business here. That that's mm -hmm. we do it with the personal touch. We, you know, you you want to be involved in something that you can see somebody's passionate about. That you know that they, they're very hands on. I mean, if you came to my uh, office, or I was thinking, you know, I belong to a club, and maybe you'll come speak to my club, the Exchange I'd be happy Club, to. and have the PowerPoint. But um, if if you make that effort, people really respond. You yes. know. They really do, and uh, you know, people always ask me about getting clients, and I say, you know, it's the same thing. It's like you have to make that connection with somebody where they trust you and they want to hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They, you know, they really, and obviously, your message is so is so great. I mean, it's it's only there's only an upside for people. There's no downside. Exactly. I mean, it's all about strengthening grassroots participation in mm -hmm, government. Mm -hmm. So, who developed this? How did this get developed? You know, or what, what was the what was you said it started forty years ago? Yes, um, it started back in seventy two or seventy three uh, under the Frank Fossey administration. Oh, okay. And and that was the intent was to encourage um, public participation in the decisions that government made right so uh frank fossey was a brilliant man to have that foresight right right yes i you know i i haven't lived here that long so obviously i i, I haven't i didn't live here when he was the mayor but i've heard many things in terms of um progressive thought um that came out of his administration mm -hmm. and this sounds like one of those things that are like progressive Progressive. So, but how did a guy like you get involved in public interest work? I mean, you could be working at a bank or, you know, mm -hmm. you know, some, mm -hmm. you know, Wall Street firm or something like this. So, how did you become involved in public uh, service? Actually, I'm, I've been in public service pretty much my whole career in one form or another. So, yeah, I haven't had too much experience in the private sector. To really? Be honest, you, yeah. And you always wanted to you always wanted to have a public service I, job? I I just kind of fell into it, you know. I mean, after graduating college, one thing leads to another. Did you That's, go here to University of Actually, Hawaii? um no, I was a, I'm a graduate of HPU right here. Oh, terrific. Yeah, That's really a, community. And it's a wonderful school yeah. and um I guess just yeah, over the course of my career, uh call it destiny or whatnot, but I just happened to get really involved in community issues. Mm -hmm. And I just really was, um, I think the word is inspired, inspired by seeing others taking, sure. you know, their free time. They're not getting paid. Passion. But they're just, passionate. It's, they're passionate. Yeah. And they're really um, just looking out for the community. I, I was just so inspired by that. So right. I just wanted to do my little part and help. And I'm very happy for my position now. It's like a little forest fire. I, you should be. <laughs> I mean, you have a tremendous position. I mean, you, you're, uh, you know, I, you, I said earlier when I met you, I said, oh, you're so young to have such an important position. <laughs> and I still think you were so young to have a, such an important position. But that's how, that's how uh, group activism, or community activism work. it's, works. It's like a forest fire. It mm -hmm. spreads. And you, you, you know, you initiate new people, and those people—it's mm -hmm. a paid-forward kind of system, mm -hmm. right? So, it, it, and it's very rewarding. So that's—I I like the, especially the younger viewers to hear that because um, I think that um, not enough people really understand the rewards of community service. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's like a lot of allure on television for you know material, you know, glamorous jobs, and mm -hmm. and, and you know what, I, your job is. I'm sure satisfying. I'm sure um, uh, can be I I fa fascinating, but it's not a glamour job. It's not no. you're not you're not <laughs> got, you know in front of taking <coughs> pictures in front of some you know mm -hmm. on some TV station, and you're not you're not even a, a politician. No. But no. but you but but important, very very mm -hmm. important, a very very important person. So uh, it's just rewarding to see the improvements. Um, although things sometimes happen slowly because there is a process. But to see actual improvements that enhance, you know, the community's quality of life, starting from just a grassroots effort, starting from people that care, uh, it's just a very warm feeling. Can you tell me about some improvements? Do you, do you know some improvements offhand, or uh, not that you would be on that no, that on that granular level? Because that's kind of. Uh, a level I, I have you. numerous of these small pocket stories. Uh, I'll share one with you. Uh, this would happen many years I ago. I love pocket stories. They're my favorite story. Um, so many years ago, this was probably a, a, a decade ago, but with this downtown neighborhood board, do um, you know where um, Lusitana and Pele Street are, um, right above Queens Hospital? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, so um, there was a concern by a board member um, about the amount of kids playing in the street. Mm -hmm. Very dangerous, uh, you know, with cars, young children playing in the street. 
And he noticed up the street, at the end of Pella Street, was a vacant parcel of land that was owned by the state. So it, it took him a few years, but what he did was he created a mini park there to give these children a place to play. And you know, he worked with the state and the city to, you know, get, get the tra transfer of the deed, got some playground equipment donated, uh, got some nearby residents to agree to take care of the park. And to me, that's just a wonderful story how this grassroots effort, effort from a neighborhood board member. One really, idea, one, one person's idea. idea. I, oh, there's a vacant lot over there. I wonder about that lot. And it really, you know, it, it greatly enhanced the quality of life for that small community. Well, that's a terrific story. That's yeah, yeah. so very uh, inspiring. Yeah, so uh, people put your thoughts into action. I mean, uh, th I'm really revved up about it now, and I mm -hmm. certainly want to go to the meetings and see what's going on. And, uh, and you know, because I, I, you know, I like name, you know. I like neighbors. I like neighborhoods. I like when people are out, and I know the older people in my neighborhood, the kids. I like to see the kids out in my neighborhood, and I like it to be a cohesive group. So, you know, I, I, to, to be involved in that way is very satisfying, I think. Yes, you know? it is. Even if you, if you can't serve on a board, you can, you can just get to know the people in your neighborhood by going and seeing Absolutely. what's going on and supporting them in, in any way you can. And, you know, and I can honestly say that's one of the um, best things about this job is I've had the opportunity to meet so many many wonderful people around the island that I wouldn't have known would have existed had I not had this job but really fantastic people that serve their community from the heart and it's just reassuring it helps you know put your faith back in humanity right exactly thing, exactly there you, are these great people around the island exactly when that, people are saying all kinds of gloom and doom and everything is good and then you find people that are just spectacular he exactly. heroes quiet heroes exactly. quiet heroes and heroines but 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 they're there and it is it's very uplifting well you're one of them oh, thank so you. thank you very much <laughs> Thank you for joining us. You've been talking to Sean, Sean Hamamoto. I'm Marianne Sasaki. This is Life in the Law. Join us next week, 1 to 1.30 on Wednesdays at Think Tech. Thanks.